He's oh gonna lock in. God. He's completely happy with that. We I have mean... seen this in the first round plus. The first pick of the Zyre, uh, of the Rakan might open up a Zyre later on, so you can play around Fodes can draw playing the Zyre Rakan. That can be fine, but I feel like this is just not playing into the players on the other side of the rift. Yeah, yeah you can go towards the Jinx, it's a strong carry right now, but I just don't think this is that that powerful a first pick for an IP. Well, the rumble locked in, you'd assume, for Shanji. Since, uh, you know, Dro's already got his support locked in. Don't really expect Rumble Jungle anymore. It's going to be Renekton locked in for Wayward to answer. I just love that Iwandi just slams the Janna again. Like, Iwandi, for a long time, we always talked about his Janna and kind of, like, wanted him to play it, but we never really got to see it much in the LPL. I feel like he's finally just saying, look, this is a Janna angle, guys. We've got a scaling AD carry. I'm playing Janna. Yay, it's a jangle! It's, uh, no, that's John <laughs> Jungle. That's, we won't talk about that one. Either way, the Rex side back for Wayward as well. It feels like, um, you know, I went to go see Dude earlier in the year. I felt like I, f I really enjoyed the way that they had their sandworms be a big part of the, uh, of the narrative. Turns out that LPL has also loved Dune. It is just now the entirety yeah. of the top lane meta. But how did they get off Nymeria? They just never touch the topic. It's an awkward topic. Don't, don't worry it about it. It doesn't work for the story, so they're just like, let's just not talk about it. Let's don't just about it. literally never address it. <laughs> anyway, I'll move on. Um, <laughs> Jungle Pass here with the Vi taken off of the board. It's uh, going to be Poppy to answer, so jungle bans on both sides. Aki and Hung, we talked mm. about this being a pivotal matchup. Hung very much having control of the early game in the previous, uh, or in the first game of the series. Yeah. Now, you really need some extra CC to level, to layer things up with the Equalizer and then the Jinx ult going over the top for NIP as well. It wouldn't surprise me to see a Maokai locked in for Aki. It's been a pick she played a lot. Again, we, we saw the Sejuani Yone combination on OMG from Shanji, Aki, and Cream as the, as the top side last year. And the other combo they played was the Rumble and then the Maokai as well for huge team fight CC from feels like um, you know a whole mile away it comes from from off your screen basically I'm surprised to see the LeBlanc band away I really feel like the CC junglers that can help combo up with the rest of the team are more valuable here for NIP so Talia's made it through the uh, Azir finally removed from the table and I'm not surprised after Fofo's game one on that pick but another control mage perfectly available there could instead go towards playing with a carry jungle here. Uh, they just the gave karma. Rookie Talir if he wants it. They could have taken the Talir away. You've maybe just given that over to Rookie. We talked about that one. I mean, you specifically mentioned it in the pre show saying, Yep, Rookie, really good at Talir. It's been his kind of pick at the moment with the zero off the table. It wouldn't surprise that one to come in now. But if you want to go towards the Markai all the same, completely happy to do that. You can go towards the Markai as well, which I really think is the prime combination here for NIP's top side. That's the conversation you can see with the Jace hover and then the Talia hover. It's like, do we want the Maokai alongside an AD mid laner or do we want that Talia alongside what looks to be a dive composition here? Aki locks in Nocturne. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Talia here. You could also go for something that leans into that dive style a little bit more, but I don't really know what you're looking for there in terms but, of AP mid laners. But why would you go for full dive into a Janna and a Karma? I, I don't, this is why I look at this Nocturne and I think, yes, you can spell shield the first target, but you're still gonna go into Rek'Sai knockup, the Karma shields, the Janna tornado and the ultimate, and there's a last pick still to come through as well, which could be really good at anti-dive. Yeah, I mean, if Hung does go towards the Shin Sub, that makes perfect sense to me. I mean, you got the Nocturne going in, but you pop the ultimate and the Equalizer into Leer and the Jinx can't do that much uh, to follow up on that as well. I mean, NIP, they could have gone towards the Maokai to just engage him off of screen and deny Janna huge value. I feel like maybe they played into W's hands a little bit here. We've got yeah. their last pick to, again, be an anti-dive champion that can just shut the door. You press the Shin Sao ult here now, and half of the team composition from NIP just doesn't do damage for the next few seconds if they are picking that jungler. Not to mention that Hung presses his ult, everyone's punted away. Iwandi presses his ult, everyone's punted <laughs> away. Like, if you're all trying to jump on in, which, to be fair, a lot of this composition from NIP can do damage from range, right? The, the, the Jinx is following up from range. The Rumble, a lot of it's going to be your ultimate. But yeah, this uh, Nocturne pick could have a bit of a tough time in this draft. And it does feel a little reminiscent, draft-wise, to the OMG series, right? Where WE mm. kind of just started playing for late game AD carry in the Zeri, and then a composition around it that just protects it, play at range, play for those late game fights. See if it's gonna work against NIP. I feel like NIP need a solid early game in this one. And what do they have to help them with that there, Joe? They have Rookie 
on Talia. That's what I've got my eyes on. I have worries about the team fight, but I do not have worries about this mid laner on this champion. It was hovered from uh, WE. They could have taken away this Talia. They could have uh, taken it away from Rookie, who has been so prominent on this champion. Gets out onto the map. Is effectively a second jungler. He has higher kill participation than his own jungler. And part of the reason for that is he's playing this Talia to such a high level. He could be the difference maker, even when I think the team composition from NRP has some issues. We need to be careful that this mid laner is not so easily shut down on this pick in particular. Let's see if WE can repeat what they did in game number one. A slow control composition once more with a Karma in the mid lane for Fofo. But NIP, this time Rookie, is on that Talia. Let's see if he can impact the map. Was it, was it, um, Nerolin, Nerolin, something like that? If I, I could probably just get the name wrong. That was, honestly, the amount of work that that person put into documenting that, that was absolutely insane. I found it so fascinating to a point, so I'm like, wow. So this is how our game works, huh? That was uh, yeah. incredible. Everything is minions, even the, the very river itself. You know that Javan ult? Javan ult was a ring of minions around it. So yeah. I, I did do a bit of game design for a while. I went to, I went to university for that, um, for a little bit. Um, and it's, it's, it's called object-oriented programming, where effectively the rule of thumb is if it works and is stable and you kind of know how it works, keep using it for forever because it's scary inventing something new which just might break in unintended ways. That's why it works. It's actually a very intelligent way to break a, to like build a game. It just has, you know, when you do it for 10 years, it gets yeah. it gets a little well, bit ropey at points. 15 years now. Yeah, it's, true. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of code there that has built up over the years inevitably difficult to fix some of the intrinsic intrinsic problems that you will get i don't know anything about game design i'm not going to pretend that i do <laughs> but i did do a bit of animation at university so that's oh, pretty cool, cool. Yeah. um i did a guy jumping over a fence so riot if you're hiring let oh my me God. know you 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 animated talent e incredible basically I, 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 like basically. way before <laughs> talent e existed as well so not to brag guys but uh no one had invented over jumping here. over fences until you did that animation i'm i'm so excited to be here sitting here with the inventor of fence jumping you're welcome. all right back you're into the game back into the game so we have uh pause over with uh, jungle starting on the opposite side of the map, and there is jungle vision. Obviously, these jungle players. Blue one on to hung on that red buff, so fighting and draw will know that they are completely fine to do whatever they want um, in there. And dangerously now, Rookie has push in mid lane. That is a very big difference from the last game, where Rookie was trying to freeze out mid lane and force Fofo into losing CS. Couldn't really get much value out of that. If he continues to get push in mid lane, um, he is very good at getting active early onto the map, and if that can w last its way over to level 6 as well. One thing which I love about Rookie's Talir is that um, even when he unlocks his ultimate, he doesn't always throw the ultimate immediately. He'll walk to a play, use Fog of War, find the combo from out of Fog of War, and yeah. then end up kind of um, kind of ulting back to where he wants to be. And I saw some stats on yeah, stats Nocturne. <laughs> we we got to talk about that stat that just came up. 27% win rate for Nocturne in the LPL. And we were already saying how... It's not necessarily a, an amazing Nocturne draft here. You've got a lot of things that are difficult to dive into. We'll see what Aki... One thing I will say, we talked about Aki, his kind of identity over the last few years being a player that likes to go in and some of the issues NIP have had is like whether or not the team will jump in with him. Uh, Nocturne is definitely a champion that can jump in. We'll see if the rest of the gang is on board. Yeah, I think that with this kind of composition, you need to make sure that you're very, very decisive with your engages at the right point, because you can have slim windows of time where Jan is not there or someone's out of position, and you can get onto the board. The problem is, um, I want is already out onto the map. It's always dangerous when I want he's onto the board here. Oh, he's going straight into Rookie. Trouble. Tether's going to come on through, but he gets the flick back, and here's Juo. Suddenly, it's Iwandi that's taken down. Aki with first blood couldn't be better for an IP. NIP keeping up strong first blood presence. Got it in game one, gets it in game two. Ooh. Chomper's landing in bot side, which might lead to some good damage. Both ghosts traded for each other. But NIP, strong early start. And this is important because Iwandi is a player that we say pretty much changes the game. When he gets out of lane, the first time he gets out of lane in game two, he immediately hits the floor. It's kind of funny because I was going to talk about the difference between these games being it's actually a 1v1 in the mid lane and immediately I won the control at level 3 <laughs> are in the mid lane but this time so, it goes the way of NIP. So um, 
basically the difference maker here is that Dro roams up and gets the vision plan to give advanced warning on Iwandi. Everyone responds in time, and then Rookie doesn't get burst out before Iwandi does on the other side. Aki gets that first blood, which means you're getting towards a first item stride breaker earlier into the game. I do like a little bit of early gold onto Nocturne because um, once he gets that first item, regardless of whether it was Hexplate earlier in the season or stride breaker now, it's a very, very big spike. Nocturne can fall off, particularly in team fights as the game goes on, because he never gets tanky enough to really survive the engage. But at one item particularly, he is so obnoxious to play around. Good gold on the board means that WE needs to be even more respectful of the level 6 mark coming in from mid, jungle, and even Shanji as well, if he has ultimate in range to respond to their globals from off screen. Yeah, bit of a weird one there from Iwandi as well, not flashing the play. He went for the heal. I wonder if that was a misclick instead of the flash or something. Bit of an odd one either way. Shanji doing a good job in this top side. Obviously, the rumble. They'll be very happy to just keep pushing in. We've seen some pretty good rumble recently. Oh. We might just see it again as Wayward is being dove, but the knock up comes through. Disaster for Shanji. Goes one for one, but Wayward answers. Shanji with the ghost on the rumble doesn't have something like a flash and an ignite. It means it's a one for a one trade. Wayward comes back and will collect this wave under turret. We talked about this top lane matchup being a uh, pretty spicy one. Shanji not quite able to cleanly pick up that gold, but still gets it nonetheless. Interesting to me now that he's actually gone for the cooldown boots over something uh, like either the, the Tabi for um, defensive stats or for the sword boots for real early penetration power spike. But still, Shanji um, at least getting some gold on the board. Certainly does, and denied a few minions there, although Wayward is, was able to TP, so still got his cannon, still got the rest of that wave. So, not a crazy lead up top. The fact that Wayward is able to get a kill back as well is so valuable for him. It does mean that an MR comes on through, makes it difficult to rinse and repeat the play for Shanji. A kind of awkward one, honestly, that he ends mm. up going down there. I'm sure he was, he was wanting to repeat what ZDZ was bringing to the table <laughs> in the top lane yesterday. And, uh, you know, Rumble has been, I'm pretty sure, one of the very highest presence champions on LPL playoffs so far. We've only seen two step two series, so I don't want to, like, oversell that. But Rumble really feels like he's back. Weber did a great job. Gets the grass proc for a last bit of healing to make sure that there's no extra burn down coming through from uh, the next flame spitter coming through. All the same. Weber uh, playing well on this, this Rek'Sai. He has been one of the biggest um, successful players of this champion so yeah. far. It looks like he's going towards the Hollow Radiance. It's harder for him to itemize in this game. He can't quite go towards, you know, the Thought Veil first item into Titanic Hydra, which was so obnoxious in game one. But once he builds up that item, I wonder how tanky he's going to be, actually. Because one of the problems about Rumble nowadays, if you hit two over overheated um, um, Electro Harpoons in a row, in, in late game, it gets to, once you max it out, it gets towards, you know, 60% shred or, or something like that. It's an incredible amount of shred when it comes through. So I don't think that way we'll be able to do that much. Here comes Rookie. A oh, Rookie's dived into this play. He's going to be rooted up. The equalizer's there, but Hung is the one to go down. Burnt to a crisp. We finish off Foti Keeper wants a piece of the action for the Rookie. A little wide. So, NIB did not need to use Nocturnal, and they don't even need to use any flashes to get towards that too. Reminder, folks, WE chose to give this Talia over. Um, maybe don't do that again. I'm just going to say that straight out. We should not be giving Rookie to Leah. He's too talented on the pick. He gets involved in two of the three kills early on. Rookie being involved in the game is typically a very bad sign for teams that NIP are facing. WE, you're not going to have an easier ride into that kind of slow and controlled game style that won them game one. Definitely not. And Wayward now struggling to step up. You saw him helping to get the grubs that's partly to be a helpful top laner it's partly because it's really difficult for wayward to step up in that top lane at this point you can see cs lead building for shanji the fact that shanji can just walk up and threaten hung when the wave crashes as well tells you a lot about where he's at in this lane but hung wants a bit of revenge for what happened with those grubs Actually, so shanji of course not running the flash doesn't have his ghost up just yet either wayward can't flash knock up and he doesn't quite get in range Shanji tier 2 boots the extra cooldown for the extra um, kind of uh, ability to use that scrap shield gets him out safely. Oh, that's a lot of damage onto Wayward as well. The Wayward does have the sustain in this lane. Shanji, I think, still going to be happy with the way that trade went. And in fact, both top laners get to go for the reset. I think the Wayward pretty much just going to stay mid, but in fact, Wayward going to stick around. In the end, the recall committed by Shanji. Grabs himself a haunting guys. Has an Oblivion Orb as well, which against this level of sustain could be really valuable. So, 
Uh, I was actually going to go check on this build again, because he's gone for the Conqueror too, it's not going to be the Comet. He's just saying, hey, if I keep hitting Electro Harpoons and I keep walking up, then I can take extended trades and just bluntly win. Especially now with early two kills as well. Um, getting towards early items, Shanji will be winning out on the 1v1 harder than I've seen other champions take that too. The Rex, I was wondering about you know, what champions could actually beat Rex I straight in a 1v1. I was wondering whether we'd see you know stuff like Darius, potentially the Olaf we've seen in, in LEC as well. Uh, to an extent doing well um, into the Rex site. I feel like if you're playing this champion out well, and Shanji, if we're talking about Shanji, there are two champions we know him for. There is the Kushanji, which is the Kasanse, and then we have the uh, the Rumble as well, which he kind of brought to prominence in the LPL as a whole. He kind of taught the whole region that this was a champion that should be meta last year. Coming out in this series, very yeah. important if you can bring Worth that out as an answer towards that uh, Rex site. Worth just throwing the... Uh the Shivana into the conversation okay, as well. Yeah, from the <laughs> I think, four, I three, think three, that needs yeah, to yeah. be acknowledged as uh, immediately in the mid lane, Aki diving for a little bit more. Rookie gets the flick back, but they don't have the damage. And unfortunately, two flashes burn for one and no kill gained. I oh, can't quite get that kill. That Fofo holds his ground on the cover and the Jigsaw ooh, can't ooh. quite finish the kill. So this time Fofo um, does buy up uh, the big ultimate from Aki. He didn't have his first item just yet, neither did a rookie. I think it's a very different story if you get those um, back in place. Think change, things change. Significant map beyond that point. Rookie still has his ult though, so WE, they still can't completely be um, kind of like um, safe from the globals coming out from the mid jungle. So Rookie will have to see if he can get himself once again involved in the play. Close to his own one item now as well, going towards that Archangels into the Seraphs. And I wonder where that ult's going to go. If you can go towards top plane to unlock Shanji, that's very valuable. But any kind of presence towards the Jinx is also much uh, much appreciated. It's going to be needed as well, because when you look at these compositions, if the fights are even later on, it could be quite a difficult game for NIP. But so far, the early game has gone pretty good. Rookie's got the two assists. You see Shanji so far ahead up in that top lane. Bot lane pretty much neutral, which is all you really want for either team, to be honest. You're playing the Zeri versus the Jinx. I say even, though. Stay actually managing to get on towards a second play here as Votic. Tries to move up, but I want these here too. Flame Chopper's come down, and he does get one, but the knock-up lands. Votic's in trouble. TP it's being rookie. channeled as somebody has to get in amongst this one, but it's Votic who's going to go down. Stay with the kill. Now a knock-up comes out from Joel. Can Rookie answer? But I don't think so. Stay. It's going to do more than stay. He's going to dominate in this bottom lane. Now maybe a re-dive as Hung enters the scene as well. Juo going to have to try and protect his mid lane. Over the, the minion. Onto the minion. It's not quite underneath the tower though. Stay takes a tower shot. Fofo goes under. Hung knocks Rookie out into the mix. But Hung in the meantime sets it all up. It's two and another rocket goes wide. WE decisive on the bot lane dive, and NIP can't get all of their pieces in the right place at the right time to respond. Rookie's a little late, and now suddenly we're walking away with big gold onto Stay and onto Fofo. First item was hit by Fofo for that play. Stay goes back with two kills in pocket, and has a bouncy on his head now as well. Normally in these kind of plays, if Rookie's turning up, you expect Rookie to be the one controlling things, but you can see that he's just a little bit late on the TP. I feel like it should have been happening maybe a couple of seconds before and it would have been the difference maker, but he can't quite get there in time. I wonder what the communication was like about this play, actually, because it feels like if Rookie gets there just a little sooner, you get stay cleanly before they manage to run out away from turret. But as soon as you've committed that teleport, you know that Shanji can't make his way down, his own teleport's on cooldown. This play is a 4v2, despite the fact that you don't have a full mini wave to come in with. Hung goes in with a double bot back and really gets things off started well. And it's the fact that then Juo, like, all that remains in this kit is his shield, right? Dashes over to get the shield and just, they both get bubbled by Fofo's Mantra Q instead. Iwandi now spotting out that this straight is happening. NIP will take it and I think Iwandi might pay with his life for even looking in the situation, but no. Rookie couldn't quite get the flick back. Iwandi will walk away, but it cost him his flash. This time it is going to be both of the mid lane jungle ultimates taken again, though. These are big cooldowns. Um, you, know, you haven't even got yourself to, you know, your first item for um, Aki to make the most of it. You know, before when before it used to be, oh, you'd have to build your Hexplate and then you're just ulting on cooldown. It's not even that case for uh, Nocturne with this current build. So NIP, they need to be uh, hitting these these ultimates home a lot more hard. Now Stay going to find a rookie outside of Fog of War. He's going to jump over, pop the ults. <laughs> That's how you know you're fed on Zeri when you're looking for 1v1s with the enemy mid lane. And Shanji TP's in, and Aki's here too. And suddenly, it's not a 1v1 anymore. That's what happened to Rookie last game. Now Stay gets a taste of that medicine.
Ah, uh, Stay. Uh, you know, I've actually been really happy with how Stay's been playing for a debut split coming from the LDL. Have to mention that, of course, he's coming in in place of Prince, who is, of course, a big signing for WE in the offseason. Felt like um, Stay has been by far the better carry of the two when they've been choosing their AD carries, though. He's still an LDL player in his debut split, though. There are a couple of these moments yeah. where he just kind of doesn't quite get the, uh, the, the right of things. It does mean that there's going to be a big shutdown going to Aki next time he ults. We've talked about that first item um, spike being so big for him. That'll be more powerful. Unless we look towards the current stream that screen, though. It's going to be Harold going down. No real contest available for NIP. So WE, despite the fact that they'll lose their AD carry bot side, will get themselves something as a cross map on top. Oh. Just of that, so the Jinx ult doesn't steal. He at least hit a target this time around. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> just a split second off from getting that steal. Ashanji. Like you say, trading on the opposite side of the map. Rookie trying to get some damage down, but this will with the tier two taken up here as well. Photic crashing a wave in the mid lane, but I think Stay will be able to get to that tier one in time to catch this one. Or in fact, there isn't. I thought there was a wave behind his icon. There was not. <laughs> uh, quite hard to catch all these things. Okay, so first items now in across the board. I mean, supports notwithstanding, because they're supports. Um, Still, first item's coming through, One, and we've just oh got the no. South completion to stay, getting caught again, no flash, oh. no ghost now either. Oh god, it's just cyberbullying at this point, but Shanji maybe caught out, perhaps a punish? No, WE don't commit to this, and stay, they knew his flash was on cooldown, and they find an angle nicely done by NIP. And that is really, really important, because whenever this area is off the board, that's one of your big wave clear machines gone as well. WE, they need to be controlling these waves to get more vision. Remember what we said in first game, just cast your mind back to how the minimap looked in terms of red wards on the map. Um, that is not the same this time. There's no vision in the enemy jungle. You can't track what's going to happen with the Nocturne and the Talir and even the Rakan as well. Uh, I mean, actually, yeah, shout out to Joe here as well. First pick Rakan actually getting involved in a lot of these plays too. I questioned it as a first pick. They are making some good value of it. It feels like he's been um, getting the better over Iwandi in some of these plays yeah. at least compared to that first game. But thing is, now NIP have got themselves all these plays back to back. You can see that W, they're not playing from the same framework. They don't have the vision control to slowly grind out this game. NIP do have tools to make things happen in this early game. Still 2,000 gold lead as a, a Herald slammed down in the mid lane. Botic, I don't think, can defend this alone. Actually gets hit by the W and Flame Chop is immediately underneath his own feet. Looks for a zap on to stay. Stay does have flash available Wayward. at this point. Engage kicks off, but Chuo knocked in. Wayward behind enemy lines and it's Fotik to go down. One HP and actually the Rek'Sai's on the wrong target. Fotik still alive here, but no, he's on both targets. Wayward with a double. Equalizer down. Are they going to commit to this one? Aki goes for his ult, but you can't go in on that one and WE win the fight. They win the fight, they get themselves a mid lane turret, and they get themselves an important strategic objective. Normally we consider the early game objectives to be Dragon, to be Grubs, and then maybe the Herald as well. Honestly, the most important one is the enemy team's mid lane outer turret. Because once you have that now, particularly in a game when you're playing against a Nocturne Talia with big ability to engage out of Fog of War, you can then put Vision down easier into the enemy jungle and stop plays like the big ultimates coming down again. This time though, you can still see that the the Rakan of Dwarf can't get the big engage, and Wayward gets himself into mid lane off of Vision. Yeah, he probably ults the wrong target first here. He does end up getting the double either way. I think he'll be happy with that. We'll double kill to the top laner from WE, who's been such a presence for them. Fantastic little flank from Wayward. Sets it up for WE. And most importantly, Fotic kind of caught out of position again. We saw him caught by Fofo. In the previous game on that late fight at the inhib set up for that top inhib in game one and now kind of steps a bit too far forward doesn't respect the engage that hun can bring to the table right dragon up in 10 seconds that would be third for nip they do have teleport and shanji who's pushing out top side already he has the andres and he has morello so if i want he wants to start healing people up it's going to be very hard for him to get full value out of that because the leandries keeps that morello ticking shanji not on the fight just yet though we're currently in a, in a bit of a salient they're pushed into enemy lines they're surrounded you need to be very careful about that. The yep. ultimates from the NIP back up. Rookie still needs a few seconds before he's got that wall. But Drake going to be down to 2k. They go in. It's smited by WE and full retreat. Looks like they will be able to get away with this one. Joel not going to pull the trigger, but instead NIP move towards this mid lane. Ah, it's a bit of a shame there from NIP that they can't get themselves a big um, advance towards that dragon. But it would have been great to get themselves the early soul point. They are still going to get themselves towards mid lane turret. Joel going in. Quickness is going to be used as well. Hung knocked in. Crescent Guard can't save you when everyone's in melee range. Nice little pick off of the back of that play. 
Yeah, that's important there. It means that they can get themselves that mid lane out of turret. We talked about it being important for WE. Absolutely important for NIP as well. One of the most important towers you can take in the entire game. Actually, it's just the most important tower you can take in the entire game. And now that means that the next time we're looking for these ultimates to come back up, and since they're now ranked 2 and you have some cooldown reduction for a lot of these champions as well, they're going to be uh, more potent and more available. NIP will really look to start breaking open this game now in the enemy jungle, if at all possible, while WE are not expecting it because it comes out of Fog of War. I just noticed that you know how uh, in River, Baron yeah. like swims up now before he spawns? Yes. He shows up on the mini map. <laughs> there oh, was really? a little red dot, like a minion dot, flying up the that. river. And I was like, Wait, there's no Callista in this game. What the hell is that on the minimap? And then he, he vanished as he got to mid lane and then appeared at the top river. I'm like, wait a second. Baron's spawning. Baron shows up on the minimap now. <laughs> I think, um, uh, that, so I have been jump scared by that a couple of times. The other time I was jump scared was back when, um, when you use a sweeper before they changed the color of wards to be like blue instead of red on the sweeper. Sometimes you'd have stuff like the Teemo ward, which looked like an actual Teemo, except it was just a ward. Yeah. That scared the absolute... The heck the little, out of me. The little Orn one as well. Yeah, the Orn yeah. one looks like it's a Teemo or something. Here, the here we go. Okay, here we go. Gonna come on through. Knock up. Comes out onto Hung, but which time straight onto the back line. Aki threatening everyone. Equalizer down, but they've separated Hung from the rest of the gang. And Fofo burning Rocket in, but the shield protects him. Hung taken out. They're split. WE up. The shield comes on through, but the last auto monsoon is enough. I Wandy saves his mid laner. So, Jada all down all the same, though. You can't use that to regen up again. You don't have any healing left in the tank apart from that summoner spell. Jungle down. Ooh. What do they wear? WE got? Rookie finds stay as well. That should be enough to push WE away. But he would trying to threaten for the engage. Fofo is here as well. He reset. But the wall is going to keep a lot of this team away. Baron, the target. No jungler for WE. So it will be taken. But can NIP get away with it? Flash out of the pit as Wayward tries to get in. But he's flicked back now. The knock up comes through and Shanji burns him up. It's NIP with Baron and a bonus. WE push beyond their safe vision lines in NIP pounce. Game one was so much more control from WE. They can't do the same in game two. And NIP have been much more efficient at pulling the trigger. As they come back out now, they're getting towards third items. Shanji particularly starting to really put up some DPS throughout these fights too. Every time this Rumble's doing damage, you've got to be so afraid. This time it's hung caught out and there's no one who can really carry him back to his own team in safety. He pops his ult very easily, but he's just not buying enough time. There's no one following up in a, in a, kind of like a strong enough fashion to kind of win out this team fight. He's just too far forward in NIP. They took down that mid lane turret a little earlier. And they managed to use it to leverage a really big play to get them ahead in this game. With the Baron buff available, you've got to imagine that WE are going to be scrambling to defend their side of the map. That fight as well feels like for Photic, if that's a crit, it's a kill. It's like that. Yeah. There's a classic Corky play from TSM where they get a crit and it wins them the game. I'm not sure it would have won them the game, but this fight is it's a huge pick and the Flame Chompers stop any kind of escape. Fofo caught out and suddenly NIP, they're going from just taking Baron to pushing open the base. That they are, they can siege very well. The Equalizer's back up as well. The Electro Harpoon doing massive work as well. A single tap onto Hung taking down his HP bar as well. WE, they're backing off, they're giving one in here, they're not ready to fight just yet, but if they're not ready to fight right now, when are they? Well, I mean, maybe when Fofo comes back and alive as well, they need that karma back, but it's so hard for WE to defend their base. Way we're trying to hold the wave, but I'm not sure you can defend this one, buddy, and he will answer with his own life. Kraken Slayer coming on through to slay the Void Beast. Ultimate comes out from Aki just to threaten Make sure that no engage can come on through. In fact, no, it's not just a threat. He is very willing to pull the trigger. So, Rookie dies on the back end of that as well. So, WE will get the, by themselves a reprieve. But still, it's going to be a big power, Baron power play for NIP. Almost 4,000 gold. Problem is now that Rookie is going to be dead for the Dragon spawn. Way will be up just in time to maybe influence the backside of that NIP. They need to uh, use the last of this Baron buff to get themselves back onto the map. Losing their mid laner at an important juncture, though, maybe WWE could use this. Would be a second Mountain Drake for them. Only their second Drake of the game, and it seems like the Baron power play is over. Just 3,000 gold advantage for NIP. Unless there's a fight in the next 20 seconds, which 
Let's not count out. WE yeah, on the rookie. drink. Five strong here as the wall comes behind enemy lines. The equalizer set up with it. Stay the target, but it's stolen by NIP. Three drakes now as Aki goes pretty deep for the play. Rookie is alone on the bottom side, and WE start charging towards him. Getting good damage out is Rookie as he's managing to survive for so long. Finally taken down, but answered by Hung on the other side. And now WE on the wrong side of the map, and Votix rockets follow everyone as Fofo desperate. Really just to hide in the brush, but not even hiding can save you now, Fofo. This is NIP taking over. Game one could not look more different from game two. NIP strike back, wayward falls, and that should be the victory lap for the ninjas in pajamas. We had a lot of hope for them coming into this series. It really does feel like in this game here, they finally managed to find their footing in regards to making those aggressive plays. I can't imagine we're going to see Rookie on Talia again. He helped out the early game too much. Has the late game been as clean as the early game? No, WE focused him down a little bit more, but this time the rest of NIP stepped up to do the damage which Rookie couldn't do from the death chamber itself. It's not going to be the game itself right now, but it feels like this should really be the death knell. I don't see how WE can come back from these kind of team fight losses. A lot of why the reason these team fight losses are so nasty beyond this point is because you can see the combo of the the, the Nocturne, the Talir, and the Rumble make it so hard for WE to maintain solid battle lines throughout the entirety of it. They've been corralled onto this side, and yes, they do end up killing Rookie, but Rookie buys so much time that the reset comes on the other side, and then you have late game Jinx with a reset. What else do you want? The splash damage from Spade stay. Goes on to Iwandi, sets him up for another one. And as you said, I can't really stay hidden from Votic all this time. NIP walk away with a comprehensive team fight victory. Absolutely phenomenal. And we're starting to see, oh, I say we're starting to see, we've seen how this composition can function for NIP because I was nervous that it wasn't going to work out for them, that, you know, they wouldn't be able to follow up on the dives, mm. that the peel would be too strong from WE. But it feels like these fights are just separated. Like, Hung keeps on being pulled apart from the rest of his team. He's trying to keep NIP away from diving. But in the meantime, there's enough threat on the back line that you end mm. up trading one for one. And part of that threat is from Shanji's... Shanji's got a rumble build, folks. He's been cooking. Yeah. Um, don't know exactly what it smells like right now. I haven't quite entered the kitchen myself. I'm not quite a believer just there, but he's gone for the double mask stacking for the increased kind of damage um, as you're going to stack that up. But he's going for a, what, a Rantuan's fourth <laughs> item beyond this point saying, yeah, I need Tankiness to stay and stack my Conqueror. Wow, that sounds I fantastic. Mean, I mean, it's working for him. I'm not going to threaten it right damage. now. <laughs> he's like drain tank rumble at this point with a bit of armor coming on through. Supers are about to push onto the final Nexus Tower for WE. They've got to go and defend the base as a wave pushes in mid nip could do with singing up these waves a little bit to be honest to try and actually get some pressure down but with baron spawning in 10 seconds i don't think they're too worried about an extended siege they may just retreat back and go for the neutral okay so that's half the health on the nexus turret gone nip um they can't still engage straight down the front and center they need an extra threat on the side as you've been just kind of saying the threat on the back side of the fight or the back line of the fight has been um, enough to make sure that the disengage from W can't be the be all and end all. You know, this Jana in the game that we saw against OMG was really powerful in this game. You know, I think it's had some value, but it's not been able to just kind of sit there in the back and deny access, kind of like a bouncer into the team fight, checking the ID of NIP, but um, he's been a little bit lax this time. A lot of people in the club yeah. now, and NIP are starting to get foody with it. Time to show some dance moves here. Look at Jana burning to a crisp. Set on fire. Not even a monsoon can put that one out. Fofo next on the target is Shanji. Just walks through them oh, all. Oh, he's a machine. It's a massacre. And Fotix sweeps it up. Rockets galore. It's time to get excited as we go to game three. Well, it looks like WE, they've had enough of dancing. They've exited on stage right. And NIP, it takes two to tango, but they find it only takes one to boogie in this one. Game two, very handily going the side of NIP. Team fights were spectacular in this one. I don't think we should be seeing Rumble for Shanji again. I don't think we should be seeing Talia for Rookie. Fantastic game number two from NIP. Snowballing like crazy, a 28 minute win. A similar game length to game number one. Both teams now with a reasonably comprehensive win on their side. And now the series gets interesting. Now we get to see both teams starting to figure each other out and having to dig a bit deeper. 
And I love that we've gotten ourselves two very different games in game one and two. It means that now as coaches, as viewers, predicting the next few games as well, it gets much more interesting to see. Well, it's not just going to be one style of gameplay which wins out the entire series. I hope we get ourselves in a long series. It feels like these teams, they deserve to show us what they've got. And it feels somewhat evenly matched right now. I'm excited for game number three. Don't go anywhere. It'll be here in a couple of minutes.